What's up people, Dr. Will Spider, and welcome to another rank video. Now, last time we did Yakuza. That was quite a success, you guys enjoyed it. So I'll let you guys vote for the next one, and you guys actually gave me a quite surprising one. Persona games. Wow, did not expect that to happen. I thought Resident Evil might take the cake, but you guys won Persona instead. So pretty much, I had to go through my whole collection of Persona games. I had to play a little bit more of it, just to see if I remember them all. 100% do remember every single one of them I played. Now, just to let you guys know, I don't own every single Persona game because some Persona games are quite rare and very expensive in Britain. I've got the Japanese ones. Don't mind that. I've got them all. But there is one game that is definitely missing. It is because it just got announced in the United Kingdom today. Persona 5 freaking scrabble omfg people i'm buying it when it comes out and it comes out on the nintendo switch or the playstation 4 you know which one i'm picking it's the ps4 because that's where all the rest of my persona games are coming from now pretty much there's over 20 games but i don't own every single one of them from persona so i've got pretty much 13 of them i'll literally well i have got 13 persona games besides Persona 5 Scrabble because I don't own it yet. But, like I said, when it comes to these ranking videos, I've got to pick my five senses. With Persona, it's mainly the battles. Is the battle really good? Anything like that? The side stories. How good are the side stories? The look. How does it feel? How does it look? By the, by the, how it does it look like a Persona game? Does it look like an Atlas game? Does it look like a Megani Tensei game? The soundtrack, how freaking badass the soundtrack is. So with that being said, we've got 13 games to go through. We're going to start from 13 all the way up to 7 quite quick. And then probably 6 to number 1 will go a bit a little bit slower for you. Okay, cue the music, let's go. Number 13 is Persona 4 Arena. Now, the reason why I picked this one very low, don't get me wrong, the soundtrack is good. The look of it is very nice. But there's so much better fighting games out there, and I wouldn't even choose this over anything. There's better fighting games out there like Tekken, Street Fighter, Blaze Blue, Mortal Kombat. You know, the good ones, okay? Um, the story, there's not really a story at, at all in it. Uh, people can digress and say it, but to me, it's not even canon. It's not even properly entertaining. I didn't find any of it quite fun at all for the story. Um, the battle, and of course, it's a it's a one v one fighting game. There's what else to, to talk about it. Fine was okay, but it was not really. Uh, it was not really out there to be saying, "Wow, that was amazing." So it's a standard button mashing game. Not really that good for me. So that pretty much that's my lowest tier. That's my number thirteen. Number twelve is Persona Four Arena Ultimax. Now, why is this a lot more higher, a bit higher than the original? It's because of the roster is bigger. There's more characters in it, which I'm very happy that they did. But still, again, the soundtrack's great. The storyline, there's not really any storyline. The um, battling, once again, it's a 1v1 button mashing game. It's just like a fighting game. It's like Tekken. It's like Street Fighter. It's like any of the other games. So pretty much, it has to go down lower. Number 11 is Persona 1, the originator of all the Personas. Now, why is this quite low? I'm not saying that it's bad. I'm not saying that it's good. It's okay. For a very beginning game that came on the PS1 in the U in Japan and pretty much in America. In England, we never got it. But look for me, I got the Japanese version, so I know what was going on. And plus, I do have translations on it. Um, it's just... The story is standard, okay? I don't want to spoil it for you guys because I like you guys to play these games to see what you think about them. You may have, you may get a new following of it all. The story's okay, it's standard, normal high school type of game, like any of the personas. But the battle is pretty much just like Megali Tensei when it all started. It's awesome, it's a lot of fun. Soundtrack's bitching pretty much. Um, some songs are quite boring, and make you want to sleep. But when it comes to the fighting stuff, oh yeah, it's got a good bit of punch in it. The look of it, the look was the biggest letdown. I know it's an old game for them standards was awesome, but nowadays, yeah, it could have been a lot, lot better because in the newer games, you can run around different parts of Japan speaking to people. In this one, it's pretty much you're an arrow moving onwards and sideways and sideways and onwards and forwards and backwards. That's just not really worth it. So that's pretty much my number 11. Number eight, number 10 
It's Persona 2 Eternal Punishment. It's the first Persona 2. So, pretty much it's exactly the same as Persona 1, but more better. The look was a lot more clear, it's a lot more better, to be honest. The music is a lot better too. Story uh, is pretty much the same as Persona 1, but a bit more um, in depth. But uh, it could have been better still, just to say, say it out there. Battle, solid. The battle elements are solid as a rock on Persona 2 Eternal Punishment. Really damn good. And fusing, fusing the um, Personas into other monsters were quite fun too. I actually really did enjoy them. And of course, Ego in that game is freaking a legend. So there's that. Um, let's go on to number 9 in the hour. Because I'm sorry, I have to go really quick with these because I don't want these videos to be too, too long. Okay? So hopefully you understand. Number 9 is Persona Q. Now, Persona Q is like, like I said, it's like Marmite. You love it or you hate it. To me, it was good. It weren't fantastic. It weren't amazing. It was good. That's all I have to really say about it. The um, the battle is, the battle was the thing for me. It was a letdown, the battling. Because I know it was a Nintendo, D, a Nintendo 3DS game. Yeah, we know 3DS doesn't really have a lot of good battle institutions, but some games on it actually do work on it. But for sadly for Persona, it didn't really work for me at all. The story, slash the um, side stories and all that lot, good. Still, once again, it could have been better. The soundtrack was amazing, just to let you guys know. Amazing soundtrack. The look of it, again, could have been better, but... From it, for it to be a 3DS game, comparing to the PS1 games that had a bit of a bigger upgrade and everything, but better graphics and all that lot, still it was just okay and everything. It's just like, yeah, whatever. Up above that though, Persona 8, this is starting to get about from good to a bit great. Persona Q2, the sequel. Now... I was excited when they got the sequel because they had so many potholes on what could happen. And they freaking did. They filled up the potholes, they put some new stuff in it, and they pretty much put Persona 3, Persona 4, and Persona 5 in one room. That is amazing. Because you don't really see that as much. You may do see it for Persona 3 and Persona 4, but never for 5. And to be honest, the music was way better. The battling was better. The story was more interesting and the side stories were quite funny. So it was a good, good game. Really good. And for God's sakes as well, it was an expensive game to even purchase. When it sold out, just a quick story, when it sold out, it went from £60 to £120 by a fortnight. By two weeks. Two weeks and it jumped from 40 quid to, from 60 to 40 quid to 120 to 130 quid. That was a massive jump. Thank God I bought it before it became expensive and rare. Anyhow, let's move on to number seven. N number seven is Persona 2 Innocent Sin, the sequel of Persona 2 The Eternal Punishment. Now, Innocent Sin is pretty much a follow up from that other Persona 2. It was like, um, like, it's like it was too, like Persona 2 was too big to be one game, it had to be split into two. Now this one had a lot more potential to be amazing. There was a few little potholes in it that uh, couldn't been that sadly could have been rubbed out and be smooth, which was of course the battling since simulator part. Battling was a bit clunky, but the story, the side stories were amazing. The look was good as for its time, and the soundtrack was also killer. It was so freaking good. But now Let's try and slow down a little bit with number six to number one. Number six is Persona 3 Dancing in the Moonlight. Now, a lot of people may be thinking, Dobsy, this is not even canon. Why is this so high than a than higher than all the others that were canon? And also Persona 4 Arena. Because I like rhythm games. I really do. And you guys know me about my music. I love music. And you can't go wrong with Persona 4's music. Same thing with 3 and same thing with 5. Persona 3, Dancing in the Moonlight, was like... I love Persona 3. I really do. Same thing with 4, same thing with 5. And But the music in it 
wasn't as good as 3 and 4. I mean, as, as wasn't as good as 4 and 5, just to let you guys know. But the story was so freaking hilarious because I love the characters. The characters in 3, 4 and 5 are absolutely ace. Super good. You can't go wrong with them. They're just super funny. The look was there because what gives it a bit of a boost from any of the other games is because of the VR compatibility with it. I played it in VR for a couple of times and oh my god, on the PS, the PlayStation VR on Persona 3, Dancing in the Moonlight, was mwah, beautiful. Loved every minute of it. And I'll still play it to the end of this, till the end of the day. Number five is Persona 5, Dancing All Night. Now, this is the originator of all the dancing games for Persona, and by God, what a star it was. Music, perfect. The look, perfect. The characters, the story, perfect. The battling, there's no battling. <laughs> That's why it's all let down. That's why it went down, because it's not really a Persona game. It's a Persona dancing game, which this is why it's not number one or anything like that. So pretty much there's nothing really to say about it, it's just pretty much the same thing as Persona 3 but minus the VR because Persona 4 Dance, Dancing All Night only came out on the PlayStation Vita and then luckily when we got Persona 3 and Persona 5 dancing games we got that as a free download for the PS4. I played on the Vita which was so much fun and I played it on my PlayStation TV, that was even better. And boy oh boy, I god hope they do another one, but have all three of them. Or maybe Persona 2 and 1 all together in one big massive dance game. That'd be amazing. But anyhow, move on to number 4. Persona 5, Dancing in the Starlight. <laughs> yeah, another dancing game. Now, this is the best one. The reason why, the music. Music hands down. You got River in the Desert, you got the Behind the Mask, you got all the great songs. And also, they have the freaking live concert songs in the game as well. And putting it on VR makes you feel like you're actually there. The characters as well, in the game, they're super funny. You have Morgana, you have Arn, you have Ryuji, you have Fox, you have um, Skull, you have them all, okay? You have Queen. It's just... It's one hell of a party when it comes to the music, and the dancing part is freaking awesome. And it's quite difficult if you put it on hard mode, and it's really difficult. I've completed it on hard mode. It took me a couple of weeks, but I actually aced it. Um, once again, though, as well, battle-wise, there's no battling at all. But the side story, you know, to... Um, mainly what I'm saying about the side story for it... <clears throat> excuse me. Um, is that you have to do particular songs as many times as you can to get points. That's when you can unlock the side quests and the side stories. That's what I liked about it, Dan. That because you had to literally, com you had to concentrate on every single song, ace them every single second, just so you can unlock it. I like that. Uh, once again, the look, it looked awesome. It like a disco. It was freaking ace. And the, like I said, the soundtrack was amazing. Now it's time to move on to the big three. Now you guys know why these three are the top because they are the best. Now these are the best, these are the awesome. These three I'm picking out from three to two to one, it was super difficult. I had to play them a couple of hours each to see if I which one I'd say the best. And this is my final opinion. Number three, Persona 4, all versions. Now that's what I'm saying. They're all counting as one whole version because I can't go ahead and say different ones from different versions because they're pretty much the same game just has a little bit of extra in it. Now why did I pick Persona 4 instead of Persona 5 or Persona 3 whatever which one you want to pick. The Persona 4 the story was great. Loved the, loved the story. It was, very it was very intriguing. It was like a standard high school anime film and like I said I definitely encourage you guys to watch the anime too. It was really funner. Um, the characters freaking hilarious. The story was amazing. The only thing that let me down a little bit was the side stories. I couldn't get into all of the, um, you know, the um, your confidence and everything, your women's spirit links, whatever you want to call them, um, your social link, your social links and everything. Um, not all of them were good. Some of them were fantastic. Some of them were fun, really funny, but all, of, but not all of them were fantastic. Just to let your truth lie. So yeah, there was that. The ending was fantastic. The secret bossy was awesome too. 
literally, if you guys don't own it, definitely go and try and own it yourself. I'm sure you can get it on Steam, Persona 4 Golden. Definitely give it a go. Absolutely amazing. But if you don't have it on the um, PC, I think you can still pick it up on the PlayStation Vita if you're lucky, but I'm not sure. But definitely give it a go. Number two, Persona 5, all versions, including Persona 5 Royale. Now, why is this number two? It was only for one reason, one reason only. It was because of one little thing. One little thing. The ending. The ending was such a freaking, I was like, oh, they could have done something else. It's like, I know that the Royale ending was spot on, really was. I love the ending. If you guys haven't seen the live stream, definitely check it out, this live stream ending and everything. Or check out the whole time let's play loved every minute of it but the ending to me i felt like they were missing a little bit because i don't want to spoil the ending for you but i just wanted a little bit extra for it. it's like you had the credits then you had the the actual final bit of the ending and then it said end and i just wanted literally when that end finished it'll turn into a tv screen and have something written on it saying this is not the end or anything like that like a little bit of a teaser oh it was such a massive tease but that was the main reason because the soundtrack was amazing the look was fantastic the battle was flawless and of course the side stories all the social links were freaking amazing it was just the ending needed a bit more zing into it and then it would be number one but now the last thing left what is number one number one has been always has been my main favorite since the very beginning Persona 3 now why have I picked Persona 3 as my personal favorite Persona game of all time story was amazing Tartarus the battle area was amazing the characters amazing the side characters amazing the freaking battle music and the music outside of Tartarus was so calm, so jumpy, bit of party, and then when it comes to fighting, beep, 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 ah, it's like, oh yeah, we're gonna start jamming whilst we're fighting. That is what I loved about Persona, because it was like, unexpected. With Persona 5, on the other hand, it was like, dun, 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 dun. that's like, oh yeah, this is full throttle. With the number three, it was like, epic, but funny at the same time, if you know what I mean. And I like that type of stuff. But what was the main reason why for number one, though? Because, like, what was the ending? Now, the ending, I don't want to spoil it for you. But it was also another game that made me cry. And the ending was beautiful. Loved the ending. The ending was literally a fantastic way to end the game. It was just oh, beautiful. And also, the end game stuff that you can do after it because in Persona 3 FES fucking even sexy edition which I call it that um, you get to play as another character called um, um, Agis who is a robot and she continues the story after Persona 3 which is freaking amazing and the things that come up after that is even better and more heartbreaking but there's so much stuff you can do with it and there, it was the old, it was, and it was the only Persona game when it came to battles. You can fuse two Personas to use one big power move. That's not been done for quite some time, which I really do appreciate. So pretty much that's all I have to really say for it. Persona 3 is my favourite game on the Persona series, whether it was Persona 3, the Persona 3 Portable, or Persona 3 Fucking Even Sexy Edition. But my least favourite, of course, is Persona 4 Arena. But it may change when Persona 5 Scrabble comes out. It may be number one. It may be my least favourite. We don't know what's going to happen, but I'm looking forward to it. But that's all i got time for today, people. You know my favourite Persona game. You know my least favourite Persona game. But I'd like to ask you guys, if you played a Persona game, how many of you played? What was your favourite? But what was your least? And also, when this video gets uploaded, I'll put up another poll so you guys can vote for the next video. With that being said, make sure you like the button, subscribe, comment down below, and hit the bell icon to get yourself notified when we're uploading and live streaming. With that being said, the people on Sleeve will see you guys subscribing, 
and I'll see you guys next time. Cheerio! <laughs>